is due next month. You gonna pay it? You bet. How? Oh, that's my business. I've been pretty easy with you, Jim. The interest hasn't been paid for over a year. I could foreclose right now if I wanted to. You know that, don't you? Don't do that, Mr. Bradley. You'll get your money and interest, too. I'll give you a nice little bonus. Yeah? Say, uh, something like... A half interest in your mind? My mind? Well, what are you talking about? I haven't got any mind. Well, where'd that stuff come from? My samples. Where did you get that? Why didn't the text the mail for me? Text lost them. Never mind where we got them. The question is, where did you get them? Listen, Bradley, you're a pretty slick article, but if you think you're going to get your hands nothing, on... I know. You'll either give me a half interest in that mind, or I'll take it all. Now take your choice. You fool, you've killed him. Well, if I hadn't hit him, he'd have killed you. Uh, now how are we going to find that radium deposit? Well, he found it, didn't he? Yeah, and it took him 14 years to do it. Somebody's coming. We'll have to get him out of sight. Them two guys right like they ain't going to dinner. And speaking of dinner, let's go over to the ranch house and see if we can promote some hot groceries. Bob, you ain't got no scruples against eating, has you? No, nope, not yet. Make me know it then. Come on, let's go. Okay, Dusty. Maybe we can get a job. A job? What you trying to do? Spoil my appetite? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Who are you talking to? I guess there's no one home. Oh, yes, there is. I see some old friends of mine. Think I'll pay them a little visit. Hey, you can't do that. 
Oh, come on, okay. Well, that stuff belongs to someone. Well, that'd be stealing. Would it? Sure. Unless the people ask you to have some. Oh, well, let's just sit right down here and wait for an invitation. What's the matter? Please, Bob, tell me that ain't what I think it is. Looks like blood. I was afraid of that. Where are you going? Thought you was going to wait. Mm-mm. Not now. Oh, what you afraid of? Probably one of those fellas. Cut his hand and was heading for a doctor. That's why they were in such a hurry. You reckon that's what happened? Sure. Mm, mm. I wonder who that is. Boy, if I could find a girl like that, Dusty, you'd be looking for a new partner. Look at that. Pretty, ain't she? Pretty? Why, man, she's beautiful. Look at those eyes. Uh-huh. Like a couple of stars. Looking out at you from an angel's face. Come on, Dusty. Let's go. The Lord helps those who help themselves. Dusty, you'll have to knock on it if you expect to find a grub pile before dark. You got a can opener? A can opener? What do you want with a can opener? <laughs> Man, is you crazy? You can't eat that. That's dog food. Not bad for an old man. Five out of six. That's fine, boy. That's him. It's your turn. Now, let's see what kind of a marksman you are. Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, I ain't no cop punching, Mr. Watson. I'm a cook. Cooks don't have to shoot. You never can tell, Slim. Look what happened to old Hash Thompson. He was a cook. That's just what I'm talking about. If old Hash hadn't put so much faith in that gun of his, he'd be living right now. Yeah, but what happened to Hash might happen to you. His shells were wet, and his weapon snapped. It didn't fire. No, sir, that could never happen to me. No, sir. Wet or dry, my weapon never snaps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shorty, set those cans up out there. <laughs> Hold it, boys. Go ahead, Slim. Try again. <laughs> oh, this old gun ain't no good. It won't shoot straight. Well, you see, it, it, it don't fit my hand. I got to have a particular kind of a gun. Here, try this one. Well, now, that, that, that's better. If, uh, if the bullets fit my aim, I'm going to show you all some shooting what is shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This, this gun... This, this,
This girl never misses. It fits mine. <laughs> You know, when I was in Mexico, I was famous for my upside-down shot. Now, that goes something like this. You know, Mexico's a funny place. You, you heard about them fellas what kills the bull? Them toradoles? They don't kill no bulls. I used to sit way up in the grandstand. And whenever one of them fellas got in the jam... I always helped him out. <laughs> I was them by shooting the bull. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're laughing. That's funny, ain't it? That's just how I done it. By slaying the bull. Now, I'll show you how I used to do it. What'd you use, Slim? A 30-30? No, no. I always give the bull an even break. I used a 50-50. <laughs> Now, Mr. Watson, I'm going to show you the shot that made Buffalo Bill famous. I taught it to him. It's called uh, the mirror shot. Of course, I do it without a mirror. That makes it harder. Hi, folks. Hope you didn't mind me butting in on any fun. No hard feelings. Do you shoot that straight all the time? Well, just about. No, sir. No hard feelings. My name is Blake. Bob Blake. From Texas. Texas is a mighty big place, son. Dutch is me from the Panhandle country. Down Amarillo Way. My name's Watson. Glad to know you, Mr. Watson. Do you own this outfit? Yeah. Well, how chance is my partner and I joining up with you? The way things have been going here lately in Dog Valley, I might could use a boy that shoots as straight as you do. If you want to stick around, I'll be glad to have you. It'll be 30 of mutton grub. When do we start? And when do we eat? Are you boys hungry? Why, why... Why he is. Yes. Them? Fix the boys some grub. Couple bowl won't be ready for about an hour, but in the meanwhile, I can fix them up some steaks and some fried potatoes and... Uh... Oh, no. We, we wouldn't think of putting you to all that trouble. Oh, let the man alone. He knows what he's doing. Come, come, come on, boy. Don't put this Who's that? One of your men? Yeah, that's Jim Connors, my foreman. Come on, you want to know him. Jim, I just signed on Bob Blake and Dusty here to ride for this outfit. Howdy, boys. Howdy. How's the fellow that cut himself? What fellow? The fellow you took to the doctor. You know, the one that got hurt over to the little ranch house in the valley. Why, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I just rode out from town. Well, I'll be doggone. You sure look like the same fella. And I know that's the horse, ain't it, Bob? Ain't that the same horse we saw over there? You must be mistaken, Dusty. That couldn't be the same horse if Mr. Connors just rode in from town. Eh, hey, Charlie Johnson's got a man that looks a great deal like my horse. Maybe you've seen him. Well, boys, let's get to the bunkhouse. One of them ought to get a different horse. It ain't right for two men to look so much alike and ride the same kind of horses. Yeah, the place was really torn up. Just like there'd been a fight. Whose place is that, anyway? Now, that's a Jennison. An old friend of mine. And when the man said that, I stopped. <laughs> Doesn't you mean you stopped running? Yeah, I stopped running. And with the flying. <laughs> Blake, are you sure that was blood on that table? I'm positive. And you say two men rode away fast just before you came up? 
Yes, sir. Boss, can I speak to you private for a minute? Sure, Cactus. Excuse me. Why don't you play that black nine on that ten, that red ten? You know the game? Yeah. Solitaire, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a one man's game. You're right. I'm sorry. I know he drinks once in a while, Mr. Watson. But old Tex has never done nothing like this in all the years I've known him. And I've got a hunch something's happened to him. Cactus, my guess is that he went on a bender. And if you go to town tomorrow, you'll find they've got old Tex in jail, waiting for him to sober up. No, boss. He ain't in no jail. I got a hunch something's gone wrong, and I'm worried about the old hoot owl. Because he ain't as young as he used to be. Go ahead, Cactus, if you want to. But like as not, old Tex will be here for breakfast in the morning and tell us both a good big lie about where he's been. Good night. Night, boss.
Were you looking for someone? Well, to be truthful, I was looking for you. You found me. This will probably cost me my job. But it was worth it. Here's where I make my second mistake of the day. The first 
Os monarcas, garoto. Yes, Captain. Come on, let's have a look. Hey, well, what? Well, boss, I found the old text, and I done put him to bed for the last time. Don't be afraid. Who's afraid? I am. Let's go home. You're a coward. Be brave like me. Was that you? No. Must have been one of them coyotes. Howdy, Sheriff. What brings you out this way? Job of dog lights. El Folkloy to serve on Joy Dennison. Bradley? That's too bad. We were on our way over there, too. This is Bob Blake, my new foreman. Howdy, Sheriff. He's got an idea something funny's been going on over there. We'll tell you about it as we ride along, Sheriff. Say, 
Hey, have you figured out what the next move is? I'm way ahead of you. I made it already. I foreclosed on Dillinson's ranch this afternoon. The sheriff's probably on his way out there now. The sheriff? But he's allowed to find out about the... Well, what of it? Guess he hasn't come home yet. Nope. Nobody here. Somebody been here. So he's the black aside, Bloom struck it. Oh, that don't mean anything. Dillison lives alone. He ain't much of a housekeeper. Place always looks this way. Is this the blood you saw? Made it, Juice. I guess the laugh on you, Blake. Come on, boys. Let's go. That's Slim's horse over there. Yeah, and the other one's Dusty. I wonder what are they doing over here? And where are they? I don't know, but I'll bet I could make a good guess. Man, my boots is sure burning up. Yeah, but I still got a chill running down my spine. Say, what was you running for anyhow? Same thing you was. What did you see? I can't tell you. Looks like you scared all over again. What I want to know is who's going back after them horses? I don't know who is. But I sure know who ain't. What's your victim to do, Cactus? Go deer hunting? No, boss. Go and skunk hunting. Well, have you seen one around? Yeah, there's one around, all right. Old Tex was shot in the back. Why did you run away and leave your horses? I was in a hurry. Did you think you could run faster than your horse? Yeah. Right at that time, that horse didn't see what I saw. Prairie flowers, prairie rose, you're as sweet as each flower that grows. Every hour, every day, you are near me. Though you're away, the rolling tumbleweed whispers to me, and they tell me that your heart's for me alone. Prairie flower, till we meet, prairie flower. Make life complete. Oh, <laughs> 
mighty fine singing, Blake. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Watson. Sure glad you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you better ride into Dog City and get the mail. Yes, sir. Uh, look in at Dennison's on your way. Maybe he's come home. Okay, Mr. Watson. What are you doing here? Just dropped in to see if Mr. Dennison was home. Dennison won't be back. I've taken over this property. Sorry. I didn't know that. There's a lot of things you don't know, hombre. Meaning what? Meaning that people that stick their nose into our business don't live long. Thanks. I remember that. You talk too much. If you want to wait for me, you'll have to learn how to hold your tongue. That comes high, Bradley. What do you mean? I mean right now I need a hundred dollars. For what? For holding my tongue. All right, Connors. That new formula of yours, Watson. Bob Blake? He rode into town. Why? What's on your mind? Right now, Watson, it's murder. Murder? Yep. Yeah. That's formula of yours, Conlon. Yes, but you don't think Bob Blake had anything to do with it, do you? Yes, I do. Hello? Did you mail, Mr. Watson? Hey, what's the matter? You fellas look like somebody died. That's your glove, Blake? Yeah. Thanks. I was wondering where I lost that. Where'd you find it? Under Jim Connor's body. Under Jim Connor's body? Sheriff, I think you're making a big mistake. Maybe so. All evidence pointing to the boy. And I got to take him in. Well, you go along with him, Bob. And I'll see that everything comes out all right. Okay, Mr. Watson. Say, Sheriff, what's the charge? Suspicions of murder. What's this for? I don't want you. Me and him's buddies. And when you suspicions him, you suspicions me. Suppose you don't find that mine. We'll find it all right. In fact, I've got a very good idea where it's located. Your proposition looks pretty good. Count me in on it. Now you're talking sense. Now listen. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to town in the morning and mail those samples and that letter that Connors took off the text. And then you and the other boys... Uh, hello? Oh, hello, Sheriff. Yes, this is Bradley. Hey, Bradley. I think you'll be able to get your money out of that Dennison property. What makes you think so? Well, I had a talk with Watson this afternoon. He got a letter from Dennison's daughter, and she's coming out here. Yeah, but what makes you think I'll get my money? The letter said the girl come into some property for my uncle's will. Get some money out of it. Six thousand dollars. She'll arrive at Dog City Junction tomorrow morning at 930. Why is she getting off at the junction? Well, it's closer to the valley, and besides, she's expecting Watson to meet her there. But he don't like the idea of having to tell the girl about her father... 
You would ask me to drive over there and meet her. Well, look, Sheriff. If it'll help you any, I'll meet the girl for you. Well, now, that's fine, Bradley. You meet the girl and bring her here to my office, and we'll break the news to her easy-like. All right, Sheriff. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. That kind of cuts into our plans, doesn't it? I don't think so, Zeno. In fact, I think it rather helps things along. How do you figure that? Well, tomorrow, we'll send those samples into town by somebody else. You and I are going to meet that train. Oh, I see. The girl didn't arrive. Hey, Sheriff. What time is it? Exactly nine o'clock, son. Got a match, buddy? Can you sing? No. Why? Well, you better give me that letter and package, or you'll soon be learning to sing in the heavenly choir. There. Are you fellas hungry? I'm so hungry I could eat a whole steer. But I guess I could wait a little while. All right. As soon as I get through here, I'll go over and get your breakfast. Chef, I'll uh, trouble you for those keys. Don't bring them. Throw them. Catch them, Dusty. Step inside, Chef. Too, Dusty. How come? Well, it's an old saying. He travels fast who travels alone, and I've got to travel fast. Come on. See you later, Chef. Hey, give me my bell. Oh, no. There's only one person going to get out of jail with this rope today, and that's me. That gratitude. Sure. Never mind asking 
got to talk to you, Sheriff. I ain't got time. Take time. Here, read this letter. I got it off of one of Bradley's men. Then Bradley must have killed Dennison, too. Come on, man, let's go. Are you Margaret Dennison? Why, yes. I was expecting Mr. Watson to meet me here. Are you one of his men? Yes, yes. Come on, come on. But what about my bag? Never mind your bag. It's that guy, Blake. He's got the girl. After him, men. Is it hard? Come on. How's the ammunition hole now? There's only two left. Only one shot left.
I wonder why they stopped shooting. I don't know. All right, boys, put the cuffs on them. Wait. Then let me do the looking. Blake! Blake! Where are you? Over here, Mr. Watson. Boys, take them to town. Bob, we just got here in time. Sure glad you came. Did you get everybody, Sheriff? All except one. Bradley got away. Who's that up there? Why, that's Cactus. Well, I guess old Cactus got that skunk he was looking for. Honey, I'm glad you're home. But, Daddy, what were you doing under the floor? Why, that's where my radio mine is located. Why, Brad and his gang were trying so hard to exterminate me. Oh. Well, that mine is worth $50,000. Gee, Daddy, that's wonderful. How'd you find it? So you're the one who stole that picture. Did you steal my picture? Well, I just borrowed it. Why? Well, I kind of like the looks of it. You may keep it if you wish. Oh, gee, thanks. What the day is ended. 